Hosanna. Hymn number 132 is called Hosanna. Praise is right. And let, her, let, let us uh, right, give our praise to the Lord. Let the praise of the, of the people of God rise to the Lord Jesus Christ. thousand years ago, Jesus entered into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, and the crowds cried, Hosanna, which means Lord save. I can't think of a greater way uh, for us to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ and to pray for salvation uh, in our country and, and uh, through the ministry of this church, and we're going to do that here in just a few moments. Um, we have several announcements. First of all, I want to mention uh, Carlos. We're taking up for Carlos today. If, uh, if you're giving to Carlos or you feel led to give to Carlos, uh, there's, a, there's a box here as you exit the building in the foyer there, right across from the door where you enter is a black box on the wall there. You can just put Carlos in big letters on it and uh, slip that down in there. Or if you've got your Carlos envelope, you can just put it in there, drop it in. There's also a, a, here at the side entrance, you can do that. Uh, any regular offering can also be put in these locations as well. Um, also, um, these announcements, by the way, uh, are not your bulletin. We've been making some decisions here uh, quickly before the service. Uh, uh, there is going to be Lord's Supper next Sunday. Okay, we're going to do that as a part of our Easter celebration. And so I'm, I love doing that. It's a great, uh, great way to worship the Lord, especially uh, on Easter Sunday. And uh, we may go over a little bit on the service. Okay, just fair warning. Okay, but uh, that's okay. We, we'll worship the Lord. Uh, you might not beat the Methodist, but we're going to have a good time together in the Lord. So um, no Sunday night service next week. I know that many of you are celebrating with your families. We want to give you an opportunity to do that. Also, uh, our Easter egg hunt has been rescheduled for this Saturday. 
so uh, it will be at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so if you're coming to help, come at 8.30 to help set up for that. Uh, again, in the South Clinton Park. Uh, WM will be Tuesday at noon at the church. Okay. Uh, also, um, if you notice our Experiencing God tonight, we will be doing the Experiencing God uh, again at 5.15. Um, let's see, our choir will be doing an Easter cantata next week called Lamb of God. So uh, looking forward to that. And then um, also anybody interested in the custodial position, you can see Margaret for an application. Or you may know somebody who you think is a good candidate who might be interested to do it. Let us know about that. Uh, and uh, then also uh, we're collecting for the homeless. Uh, so if you've got uh, laundry detergent, feminine hygiene products, matches, candles, uh, small flashlights, AA, AAA batteries, you can bring those items to the church office. And, and uh, Wayne goes uh, on Monday evenings uh, to take those over uh, to minister to the homeless. And so... Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for allowing us to meet in this place to worship your great and awesome name. Thank you, Lord, that we already have worshipped as we've begun this service, Lord. We've lifted your name up. And uh, we just ask that you continue to empower us and um, fill us with your spirit and uh, help us worship and exalt your name. Lord, we pray for these who are gathered here today, Father. We pray for the burdens and concerns uh, on the hearts of your people, God. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to every heart. Uh, Father, some may be lost today need to know you as their Lord and Savior. We pray, Father, that you would touch their hearts today. And Father, I ask that uh, you would help us to lift up the name of Jesus here this morning. Father, we lift up those names in our prayer box that are Operation Andrew Liss who are lost. Uh, we pray for the community outreach that's going on this week, God, and we pray that you would help us to reach people with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But open hearts, God, in our way and open doors and give our lips uh, openness with your truth and uh, fill us with your spirit to declare your truth. And, um, Lord, we, uh, we pray that as we give today and, and as we serve and as we hear your word and respond to you, Lord, that everything would honor your name. Uh, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for this special time of remembering what our great Savior has done for us. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. On that, on that day when they laid down the palm leaves and began to uh, praise the Lord Jesus, uh, they didn't have the full picture uh, like we do. We have the, we have the, the resurrected Lord, and, and, uh, 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 but how much more can we celebrate? We're here to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Hymn number 275 is called just that, Celebrate Jesus. Let's stand as we sing.
bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look into your word, speak to our hearts. Father, uh, let your word uh, be alive as it touches us and changes us and helps us, God. Change this, this country, Father. Change us. Save, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, we're going to be in John 14. John 14 and verse 1. Job was a godly man, but Job went through quite a bit of trouble. And uh, he lost all his possessions. He lost his family except for his wife. All his kids died in one day. He lost his health. And in the midst of all of this, Job continued to trust God. You know, sometimes life is not easy. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes the struggle is hard. Sometimes you've got to put one foot in front of the other with the power that the Lord Jesus provides us. We always need the Lord, but we especially need Him when we're struggling. Uh, this scripture actually uh, is on the tail end of a discussion of the difficulty and trouble that Jesus and his apostles were going through. Matter of fact, that we didn't read chapter 13, but chapter 13 talks about the fact that Jesus says, I, my soul is troubled. Why? Because he knew what Jesus, uh, what Judas was going to do. Judas was going to betray him. He knew that Judas was getting to ready to make decisions that would destroy his life. He loved Judas, and Judas was his friend. He also knew that he was about to be separated from his friends, at least physically. He says, uh, I'm going away, and you're not going to be able to come with me for a while. You will eventually come and join me, but not for a while. He also mentions the fact that Peter would deny him three times. The, the leader of the disciples would utterly fail three times in a row. And one with a teenage girl <laughs> saying, do you know him? And, and he is calling down curse. And, and Jesus sees all of these things. He knows all of these things. But he keeps trusting God. <laughs> And he calls his disciples to trust God, to trust him, and to walk through this difficult time. You know, sometimes things just seem like chaos. And the disciples were about to enter into a period of, of life that felt like chaos. I, Jesus is arrested. They all flee. And, and uh, Jesus is brought before these trials, and he's falsely convicted. Um, even though there's no evidence against him. Uh, their Savior is hung on the tree, crucified, and laying ultimately in a tomb. And the scripture tells us in one place that they were locked in a room together for fear of the Jews. Now, I tell you what, that sounds like chaos to me. Everything they had invested in their life, uh, their life it was falling apart before them. And Jesus gives them these words. You see, Jesus knew what was coming, and Jesus is preparing them and telling them how to respond. Did you know Jesus knows what's coming in your life? He knows what you're going through right now. And he is ready to help you and come alongside you in the midst of it. Uh, when the struggle is hard, we need to put our trust in Jesus and rest in Him and find strength in Him. The title of my message is When the Struggle is Hard. And look with me at John 14 and verse 1. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, 
you may be also. You know the way where I am going. Lord Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So when the struggle is hard, what are we to do when the struggle is hard? Well, first of all, we need to, you need to trust your God. Trust your God. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus himself said his heart was troubled in, in uh, chapter 13. Now he's saying, don't let your heart be troubled. What is he saying? Quit being troubled in your heart. When you're troubled in your heart, put your trust in me. You know, there's a lot of things that can cause us to have a troubled heart, aren't there? Uh, you may have uh, trouble, maybe you're worried about your children. Maybe you're worried about a, a, a sibling or, or a parent who's suffering with a disease. Maybe you're troubled at what's happening in our culture today, in, in our nation. Maybe you're troubled by what tomorrow holds. Maybe you're troubled because it seems like life is falling apart, that everything you counted on seems to not be going as you had planned. Trust the Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus is getting ready to face the most difficult time of his life. And what does he do? He goes to God in prayer. Chapter 17 of this book tells us that he goes to God in prayer, the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Of course, we know he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prays in agony and cries out with loud cries and tears as he prepares for this great trial in his life. But you know what Jesus found? Jesus knew this, but Jesus saw that God carried him through it all and he gave him every bit of strength he needed to face it. And he went through it and he came out the other side. He said it is finished, but then he came out the other side and rose gloriously from the dead. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, reigning in exaltation and power. <laughs> And he is able. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus was able as he went through this trial. But Jesus is able right now in your life. Trust him. Believe in God. You believe. The word believe here also means trust. Okay? You trust God. Trust also in me. As you go through this great difficulty, you put your trust in me. You call upon my name. I love the scripture in Matthew that says, where Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. You see, we need his rest in those difficult times, don't we? Uh, we can bring our burdens to him, and we can ask him for the grace and the strength that we need to trust him. And to walk with him in the midst of our trouble. And listen, there have been some times I've had to put one foot in front of the other. And I know that you have as well. But can I tell you something? Jesus has always given me what I needed Amen. to make it through. Amen. And I praise his name for it. Don't let your heart be troubled. When trouble comes into your heart and anxiety comes into your soul, cast your cares on the Lord. For he cares for you. We look at the cross and we see the heart of Jesus toward us, don't we? Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. One of the scriptures, he says, don't you know I could call 10,000 angels right now and my enemies would be destroyed. But I've come to this hour for a purpose. He saw you. He saw me. So he said, give me the nails. Give me the wrath. Give me the justice. And he died for us. What a Savior. What a Savior we have. Trust your God. 
I, I read in, in 2 Corinthians, the first part of 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about a difficult time in his ministry. And he said, you know, he said at one point we despaired even of life. He said, but what I found in that time of trial was that I served somebody who could raise the dead. Isn't that great? He can raise you up. This is the Savior that we serve. Trust Him. Trust Him when the struggle is hard. And by the way, it always is a smart thing to trust Jesus. Not just because He's able to help us, but also because... He knows why he created us. He knows why we're here. He knows what his plan is for our lives. And he wants to do us good. Why wouldn't we trust him? Right? You know what I found? At, at times, I, I remember, especially early in my uh, adulthood, I used to think if I trusted Jesus, he might do me wrong. He might, uh, you know, sometimes we have this idea, if I really surrender to Christ, if I really trust him with my life, you know, he's, he's going to do me wrong and I'm going to be miserable. The, that's the farthest thing from the truth. As we trust Jesus, his purpose will be carried out in our lives. And sometimes that may not always be easy, but his purpose will be best. And I, listen, every time, I've blown it plenty of times, but every time that I have followed Christ and I've trusted Christ, you know, I've not regretted it. He is trustworthy. He is the greatest of the great, the highest of the high, the truest of the true, the purest of the pure, the holiest of the holy. He is worthy of our trust. When the struggle is hard, trust your God. Secondly, when the struggle is hard, remember your home. Remember your home. He said in verse 2, In my Father's house are many rooms. Uh, some, uh, uh, you can translate that, dwelling places. Uh, the Latin is where we get the word mansions in some translations. Uh, but uh, the point is, God's got a place for you, right? <laughs> this world is not your home. Remember your home when you're struggling. This life is a vapor and then eternity comes and it's forever. <laughs> I've got a home and, and God's told us there's some things we don't yet understand about our home. But some things God has revealed to us. And uh, one of the, the scriptures I love is the description of the New Jerusalem. Talk about an impressive place. Uh, the width of that place is two-thirds the size of the United States of America. As well as its length. As well as its height. Okay, that's how big it is. The foundations of the, of the city will be covered with gemstones. The walls will be made of jasper. The gates will be these huge pearls. A single pearl will be the, each gate. Of that magnificent city. We've all heard of the streets that paved with gold. And, uh, and then Jesus says here in the scripture that we look at today. I go to prepare a place for you. Listen, I know he's preparing a place for all of us. But I believe he's also preparing a place specifically for us. Isn't that an amazing thought? I watched a, a show uh, recently with Sherry. I may have mentioned this to some of you. I, but uh, this lady's sister was coming to move to her town, and she has a, one of those remodeling shows on TV. And, and she had remodeled the home. And because she knew her sister, she remodeled it according to what she knew her sister would like. And all of these different facets of this home and, and, and the beauty of this home... Uh, were specifically custom designed for her sister. And of course her sister loved it. But better than any home a human being could make for us, what about the person who knows us inside and out? What about the person who knows us better than we know ourselves? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's preparing a place for us. Amen. This world is not my home. 
Um, Philip and I got a door shut in our face Monday night. Uh, we had some somebody uh, at another home told us, just go right back out the way you came. You know, uh, you go right back. We, we, we're not into this. You go back. They laid up treasure for me in heaven. <laughs> this world is not my home. One day, my Savior's coming, and in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Amen. everything will change. No allergies. I was talking to somebody about asthma and allergies before the service. No asthma in heaven. No cancer. No heart disease. No dementia. We'll be made whole. So when the struggle is hard, remember Paul said this light and momentary suffering is not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us that day. Remember your home. So when the struggle is hard, trust your God. When the struggle is hard, remember your home. When the struggle is hard, anticipate Jesus coming. Look at verse 3. Jesus has just told them, I'm going away from you. Look at verse 3. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Anticipate Jesus coming. Now, listen. Heaven is about more than the beautiful city that we'll see and more, but more uh, than the, the beautiful new earth that is untouched by the curse of sin. All of those things will be wonderful. Even the loved ones that we'll meet over there. Uh, heaven is about being with Jesus. That's the chief attraction. And the scripture says there won't be a temple in this heavenly city because the Lord God will be the temple. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb, will be its light. The brilliance of our Savior will be the light. You won't need a sun. Now, that's going to be some kind of powerful light. And we will be in the presence of God. One of the most comforting things is you read the, the book of Revelation and you, you see the saints are around the throne and it says a thousand times a thousand and ten thousand times ten thousand you know, the mind starts to get blown. <clears throat> and it says they're singing before their throne. Worthy is the Lamb. You see, in the difficulties of life, my Savior carries me through. He sent his spirit to live within me. He says, I, in one place, he says, I'm coming to you. I'm sending my spirit to you. But because the spirit, the Father, and the Lord Jesus are one in their essence, as I send my spirit to you, I'm coming to you as well. I'm living in you. But he's also saying, I'm coming back. So, <clears throat> um, Jesus sustains me in this life. And the sweetness of his comfort, the sweetness of his presence in difficult times as I've sought him uh, is, is such a precious gift. I'm so grateful for the comforting work of the Holy Spirit in my life. But can I tell you something far above all that? This is just the taste. One day Jesus is coming. Amen. You talk about joy. You hadn't seen joy till Jesus comes. You talk about peace. You haven't seen peace till Jesus comes. You talk about victory. You haven't seen victory till Jesus comes. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And we'll rise in a glorified body to be with the Lord in the air. And we will always be with the Lord. What a hope. Uh, 
What a comfort. What an anticipation. When you are struggling, when you are going through difficulty, anticipate Jesus coming. So when you're struggling, when your struggle is hard, trust your God, remember your hope, anticipate Jesus coming, and finally remember Jesus' sufficiency. Remember Jesus' sufficiency. Verse 6. Jesus told him, Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can you say we know the way? Isn't that a practical thing to ask? I'm glad he was honest. He says, Lord, I don't, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You're saying we know, where, we know the way. We don't even know where you're going. I mean, come on. Look at what Jesus says in response. Uh, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I want to tell you something. This is primarily about salvation. There's only one way to have a relationship with God. There's only one way to have eternal life. And that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the way. He is the eternal life. He is the truth. He's the true way. But the fact that Jesus in his perfect purity is sufficient to be our substitutionary sacrifice. The fact that Jesus fully satisfied the justice of God, the wrath of God on the cross in our place. And he is fully sufficient to bear the sin of the world. Is wonderful and is true and is, it's the, he's the only way to salvation. But he's also sufficient after you come to know him. He is still the way. Have you ever wondered. What way to go in life. Have you ever been perplexed. And, you, and said Lord I, I just don't want, know what to do with this situation. I don't know. Jesus says I am the way. When you don't know what to do. You can come to God for guidance. But you can also just come to Jesus. And follow him in the midst of your circumstance. Because he's the way. He's the way, not only to heaven, but he is the way in life. Listen to him. Follow him. Obey him. Make him the center of your life. And you'll find out what life's all about. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And have it abundantly. Jesus is the source of life. Not only eternal life in the future, but eternal life today. As I put my trust in Jesus Christ, as I repent of my sin and trust in Jesus Christ, immediately that eternal life begins in my heart. And it is sustained. I love what 1 Peter says, we are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen. <laughs> I have been saved. I am being saved. I will be saved when Jesus comes again. But I want to tell you something. It's all Jesus. Every part of it from beginning to end. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the good shepherd who comforts us and guides us and supplies what we need along the way. He is the truth. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Everywhere I look in this world, I see lies. Jesus is the truth. You know what I find so refreshing? <laughs> I, I look, I, you know, I don't find the news refreshing, but I, I hear the news. I, I see things that are going on. I, I look around in the culture. None of that comforts my heart. But then I lift my eyes to my Savior. And I find one who is completely true. He keeps his word. He speaks truth every time he speaks. He is the embodiment of the truth in his person. I may not understand the truth all the time, but I can know the truth because I can know Jesus, and he is the truth. 
And in the midst of all the confusion of our world, can I tell you something? Jesus has given us his word. He's also given us himself. If you want to know what truth is about, Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is found in a person and his name is Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, there is no truth. You will not find the truth until you bow the knee to Jesus. You say, are you saying lost people can't know what's true and what's false? No. I'm just saying they can't truly understand what the truth is until they know Jesus because he is the source of the truth. And he helps all of life. It's amazing um, how our understanding is settled and, and how God gives us an understanding of life and circumstances through Jesus Christ. I, I had, before coming to Christ, I was able to know things about uh, that I was trained in or whatever, but uh, I truly understood things when I came to Christ because he is the truth and he is the light. Uh, a few years ago, we, we had a, a fellow come and he, he was... He was weeping at the altar and he gave his heart to Christ and he was gloriously saved. And he told me, I, I saw him a couple of weeks later and he was, uh, he was telling me, he said, he said the, the sky's bluer. He said, I, the, I noticed the flowers. I hear the birds sing. Everything about my life, he said, it's like I've started seeing in color. Everything has changed because I know Jesus Christ. And the best is yet to come. He is the life. I live, I live because he is risen. <laughs> and uh, listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I used to think if I surrendered to Jesus Christ, I'd be giving up my freedom and meaningful life. That is not true. You begin to live when you trust Jesus Christ. Surrender to him. Repent of your sin in your own way and, and choose to follow him because as you do, he'll change your heart and he'll give you his life within. Things will not always go well for you. There'll be trouble and, and difficulty in your life. Um, but you'll know Jesus and he'll be with you. And you can have that sustaining power of Christ in your life. To help you live with abundance. Uh, we get a little glimpse of that as you see Paul and Silas in the jail, don't we? <laughs> They've been preaching the gospel and uh, uh, some in the, in the Philippian town didn't really appreciate that. They were arrested. Uh, they were beaten for their faith and put in jail. <laughs> and there in the jail... They started having a worship service. I, I don't know exactly how it began. But all I know is the power of God came down. <laughs> they're, they're, they're singing, they're praising God in the middle of the night in the jail as their backs are healing from a beating. And God said, I can't stand it any longer. He shook the place and the jail doors came open. And... Uh, the Philippian jailer got saved. All these things were happening. But they had joy in the midst of their suffering. Listen, I don't care what Washington does. I don't care the direction our country goes. I do care. But I don't care in terms of our personal joy. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you know Jesus Christ, you can have joy in spite of, not because of. That is the life that Jesus came to give. And so he invites you to trust in him. And if you know him today, he's saying, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust me. Hope in me. Remember your home. Remember that I'm coming. Anticipate it. And know that I am sufficient to carry you through to the other side. Let's pray. Father, thank you for giving us such a great hope in Jesus. Thank you for your amazing love for us.
Thank you, Lord, that you're so faithful. Lord, when we are hurting, when we're struggling, when we're broken, that you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Lord, I pray that you would work and heal and move in this place here today as your people seek your face. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a time of invitation that I want to invite you to respond to what you've heard today. And if you're struggling today, maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, I've not been trusting you. Maybe you need to come to this office and say, Lord, I've not been trusting you. Uh, please forgive me for that. Fill my heart with your spirit. Uh, quicken my heart so that I can trust you as I should. Uh, maybe you're here today and you say, you know, uh, I don't know Jesus Christ. And I need to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ today and surrender my life to him and receive that eternal life. If that's your heart today, I'm going to invite you to come. Uh, you can come to this altar and tell the Lord in your own words. And please let us know as well so we can rejoice with you. Or you can come here to the front and uh, if you need some help with a prayer or something, I'd be happy to help you uh, as your heart is ready to surrender and trust in Jesus. Uh, but you respond to him right now as he's leading you. Let's stand and come. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord.